hi everyone it's me ella and i'm back with another prophetic word or admonition from the lord um yeah this is gonna be a little bit different but you know just take it as a a gentle rebuke from god you know um i know specifically for those of us waiting for um God's promise of a kingdom marriage, a God-ordained marriage. Uh, we're going through a lot these days, you know. Um, and yeah, some of your kingdom spouses have been just acting crazy and um, doing the most, you know. They're they're not exhibiting the the behaviors of what a godly husband should be and what he should do. But um, the Lord highlighted this to me, uh, well, this revelation through a conversation that I had with a friend and um, she's married. She's a young Christian woman. And <laughs> I was just asking her, you know, curious about what married life is like because I'm not married and it's something that I desire. But I just wanted to hear from her you know, what's it like? Um, and I wanted to pick her brain. So she mentioned like something from Ephesians 5 and she said, um, you know, in the moments where it's hard, I have to just remember that from a biblical standpoint and from Paul's, um, advice in, in Ephesians chapter five, I don't have to love my husband and I was like, what, girl? And it's sort of just like, it made me perplexed, you know. I was like, well, love has, you know, it has to do with a lot of, it takes a, a, a large portion of your union and your marriage. You know, you're supposed to love one another, right? And we all, um, we've heard, you know, the fairy tales of like people just being happy in love. And she was like, uh, yeah, if you actually read the section in Ephesians 5 where it talks about how wives and husbands should address each other, wives don't have to love their husbands, but they do have to respect their husbands, okay? So I'm going to read um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33 <clears throat> and this is our brother Paul's advice to the Ephesians so he says wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church his body and is himself its savior now as the church submits to Christ so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish." Verse 28, in the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body. Verse 31, therefore, a man shall leave his mother and his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh this mystery is profound and i am saying it saying that it refers to christ and the church however let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband okay so i think it's all um pretty straightforward 
Paul laid it all out um, in this passage of scripture. And I think it's very profound advice. Um, for those of you who are standing in the gap for your husbands or your future husbands, um, you know, it's hard to actually love them, you know, especially when they're acting out and going crazy and um, still leaning on the things of this world and following excuse me, following um, worldly doctrines and just, you know, living off their own flesh and their own fleshly desires. Um, it's hard to love your, your God-ordained husband, right? But the Lord is saying today that you don't have to love your husband. Um, he knows that it is hard to love your husband in those moments. Um, and maybe you're even finding some... You're, you're finding it hard to see any redeemable qualities in the husband that you're waiting for right now. Um, and the Lord is validating your feelings. He knows that you're, that you're human and that both you and your husband are flawed creatures, right? So, um, even in the midst of all of that, you still have to maintain a level of respect for your husband. Um, for those of you that have children with your God-ordained husband, and this is the man that you know without a shadow of a doubt that um, God ordained for you, um, you know the rule, right? When, when you are with your kids, you don't speak badly about their father. Um, you, you still respect them. You know, you don't, you don't um, gossip about them or tell your children what a horrible person they're being or how how they're treating you badly but you still um speak kindly about them speak respectfully about them and you keep praying for them so the same thing applies um when you are talking to your confidants your friends your family members um always remember to have that respect for your god ordained husband in the back of your mind and in your heart, okay? And in the moments where you feel so frustrated and so hurt and um, heartbroken and maybe even angry and resentful uh, towards your your God-ordained husband, right? The Lord wants you to take those frustrations directly to him, okay? Uh, you can even just sit aside, you know, in your quiet time and be like, you know what, Lord, I wasn't happy with the way that my husband spoke to me or my boyfriend, you know, or if you guys are friends, whatever the case is, the Lord knows that this person is already your, your kingdom spouse. So you just go to the Lord and say, I wasn't happy with A, B, and C. Um, I felt really angry and that they disregarded my feelings and they're treating me poorly take it all to God. He is there and he's ready to listen and he knows the ins and outs and um, he knows why your, your kingdom spouse is acting this way, right? So yeah, just remember to always take everything back to the Lord and the Lord um, is still in the business of actually disciplining his um his sons and for you know my gents out there who are listening you can also do the same for uh your god-ordained wife uh, maybe they're a prodigal as well but you still have to love your wife okay it's very clear here in the scripture that paul says husbands should love their wives like they love themselves and it's hard for you too gents um a lot of you have sacrificed a lot and you've stood in the gap for your um your prodigal wife right but you still have to love them and um you know yeah just just be there for them as best as as you can and um the lord will sort it out like your cries your frustrations are not unheard he's going to act and he is actually um, still convicting some of these kingdom spouses of their behaviors and for some of you you're going to be receiving apologies <laughs> very soon okay they've come to their senses they know that they 
um, did wrong and they hurt you, they offended you, and they didn't treat you the way that um, Christ treats the church, okay? So they're going to come to you and um, they're going to be humble. They're going to apologize. Um, for some of you guys, your kingdom spouses don't know how to apologize, okay? They don't have the words um, to speak. So maybe they'll do like a grand gesture for you or just something sweet to let you know that they are sorry. So um, yeah, just go to the Lord about this and um, he'll minister more to you and give you instructions and be ready to receive it, okay? Um yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, the Lord is going to restore the love between the both of you guys. Um, yeah, it's a process. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing that the Lord um, ministered to me or revealed to me is that some of you guys are in a rush. Okay, <laughs> you've been standing for many months or many years and you're just wanting this thing to happen. But always bear in mind that this is a process, okay? Um, things don't just happen overnight. Your kingdom spouse isn't just going to change and be like this amazing man overnight. It's step by step, day by day, month by month, and even year by year. Um, when King David was anointed to be king of Israel, um, he was a very young boy. I think he was between the ages of 13 and 15, but he still had to go through a 10 to 15 year process, right? Um, of growing, of building a tough skin, of, um, you know, developing that close relationship with the Lord. And um, I read somewhere that some of the Psalms that we love reading today, uh, King David wrote them during that 10 to 15 year wait. So in that time, he was developing, he was growing, he was becoming stronger. The Lord was imparting wisdom upon him and also just sharpening his gifts, okay? So that when he did finally get to the throne and um, replace King Saul, that he would be ready and strong. So in the same way, guys, your kingdom spouses are going through a process. I know the wait is so hard. It's tedious. It's frustrating. Um, you guys have been going through so much spiritual warfare um, to the point where it's almost unbearable. You feel like giving up, um, but don't give up on your, uh, your kingdom spouse. The Lord is relying on you. Okay. <laughs> so don't give up on them. Um, just remember that these things take time and you need to surrender this process to the Lord. Okay. The Lord, the Lord's timing is way bigger and grander than our understanding of it. He knows why it's taking this long and he knows the things within your kingdom spouse that he still needs to uproot and cleanse and refine and sharpen, okay? So don't lose heart. Keep standing in the gap. Keep trusting that the Lord will fulfill his promises to you and that you will be united eventually with your kingdom spouse, okay? Always remember it's a process it's not overnight so yeah guys um i think that was the the last thing that um the lord wanted me to speak about um yeah that's all guys so i hope that this encourages you guys um continue to walk in love that's actually um the first passage in ephesians ephesians chapter five um Paul tells or advises the people to keep walking in love and to treat each other well and um, to to not um, to not walk in the ways of the world. Okay, so continue walking with the Lord, uh, surrender to Him, uh, take out all your frustrations to the Lord. You know He is your diary, He's your personal counselor, He's your therapist, 
and he knows everything and he cares about you he cares about your kingdom spouse he has big plans for you guys so yeah do not lose heart do not lose hope keep holding on and keep standing on business for god okay so um yeah guys i hope that this encourages you guys and <coughs> Excuse me thank you so much for your support and your prayers and your encouragements as well i'm feeling much better today i have you know my makeup on um so yeah i'm in a better mood um still a bit anxious and going through it but it's not as bad as yesterday so thank you guys so much for your prayers and your messages of encouragement and and your your love so yeah thank you so much guys i hope that this finds you well i hope that this locates who this uh, message is for and yeah take it back to the lord as always uh test the spirit behind every single prophetic message you hear and behind me as well so yeah guys i hope that you have a blessed friday please be safe continue to stay at the lord's feet um give him thanks give him praise and uh be obedient to him yeah be obedient submit to the lord okay so um yeah guys that's it for, for now um i think i'll post another prophetic message later on today but until then, it's bye-bye and I love you guys so much. Mwah. Ciao.